What does it take to make one cup of coffee? What are the stories contained in a single cup? Who is this handsome man? Children, how do you make a cup of coffee? First, you boil it. You boil it, and it boils, and then and then you throw it out and sweeten it. And if you want cream, you can throw the cream in it. And then when it's ready, I just drink it. Do you like drinking coffee? No. 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 This is the story of a tiny revolution, representative of thousands of similar revolutions taking place all over the world. It is a story about the sustainable farming movement and about Marley Coffee, a new coffee company raising the bar for responsible farming. Welcome to another episode of MichaelaTV.com. This is Michelle Davies, your host, and I'm here with Rohan Marley of the Marley Coffee Company and, of course, of the very famous Bob Marley family. There's been some rumblings through the grapevine that you have started a coffee company. Uh, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to do that. Well, about 10 years ago, um, a friend of mine introduced me to a land in Jamaica, a nice piece of property about... Um, 50 to 8, uh, approximately 50 to 80 acres and you know he said you know Rohan you, you have to see this land you know you're gonna you see this property you're gonna love it right. you know I said all right let, let's go take a look I went in I went to the property it was a beautiful river the river reminded me of the Nile so I, I was like wow I, how, how do you how do you say no like you know mm -hmm. so then we we acquired the land and after everything now there was a, some folks that worked on the property mm -hmm. And I asked them, you know, what's on the property? And they told me coffee. I said, coffee? Oh, I said, wow. coffee like oil? Like, <laughs> yeah. like coffee like oil? Coffee? I said, yeah, Blue Mountain coffee. I said, oh, nice. Oh, my God, that's awesome. I said, but do, who knows about coffee, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was 10 years ago, and I took some time to study and do some research into the, into the coffee industry. One thing to the existing farmers was, you know, you can't use any chemicals on the property. Right. And they told me, Mr. Marley, it, that won't work. So I said, well, all right. If I'm being in this coffee industry business, it's got to be organic. If right. You use, and if you use any chemical on the property, I'll cut every tree down. Are you talking about like pesticides yes. and things like that? Okay. Chemicals, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pesticides, <clears throat> all the sides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we so created a nice product and it's now fully certified organic. And wow. But um, my coffee on the land is actually one of our brands of coffee. We have um, Ethiopian coffee, we have coffee from all over the world, Guatemala, Papua New Guinea, wow. and throughout the South Americas, and all the great A coffee beans, you know, certified organic. Did you choose those yourself? Yes, yes, region? each region, yes. Each farm, just to make sure they're dealing ethically grown, you know, mm -hmm. and treat the farmers, but I don't know. On our property, we double our farmers' wages, because we want, you know, we just want to change things around a little bit. Right. So as, as far as, um, impact in the community and as the farm, as the coffee company itself, well the coffee company is just starting up so the coffee company isn't really, hasn't really made such a huge impact on the community as yet what the farm has. Right. Because the okay. farm has been there 10 years and you know in the farm we want to deal with sustainability, mm -hmm. sustainable farming, you know, right. giving back to the community and then if you go to the community now, you can see some of my farmers how they started out with, you know, a home like this. Mm -hmm. And now our whole house is like this. So you're helping them grow their lives as well. Yeah, even though That's we cool. aren't making no money yet. <laughs> like you know, I go to you go to Napa Valley. You know, you have wine tours, and I want it to be like an example. Okay. So so people to go and test and try and, and sample see and, and see how what you're doing in the farm. But through sustainability. Right. You know, giving back to the earth. You know, yes. protecting the earth. When you use the chemical, the chemical breaks down the root system. So right. you might have a you might have a lot of yielding for the first two years, three years, four years, five years, 
what, the seventh year, the eighth year. But then you cut your nose to spite your face, you wind up with nothing later. Yeah, exactly. You deal with sustainability. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the first guy to come with the idea. I'm just one of the guys that really have a passion for what I'm doing and wanting to, you know, be better. Yeah. Be better at what I'm doing. And yeah. green anyway. You've been, you've been green from the beginning, right? <laughs> yeah, green, green from day one. Yeah. I mean, I tell, you know, because, you know, we like Rastaman, we like to plant our own food and eat what we plant. We, Rastaman as a, as, a, as a whole has been green. So, and, and we call that ITAL. ITAL? And that's one of my certifications. On our bags, we consider my farm an ITAL farm. <laughs> wow, what is that? What is ITAL exactly? ITAL is like, um, ITAL is just another way of staying organic. Okay. But, but okay. ITAL is just natural. Right. I tell it's my life. I tell. I'm gonna have to use that from now on. I, although, I although when I say I tell it's vital. I tell it's vital. <laughs> <laughs> tell us something about what it what it is to be a Rastaman. A Rastaman it means a Rastaman is a is a Christian, you know. Okay. He's a follower of Christ, you know, mm -hmm. a true Rastaman, you know, who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ. Rastaman. You know? Rastaman is like the man you find in the wilderness. Okay. It's the man, you know, the will in Rastaman live in the wilderness. So it's know? about the earth and about earth being and connected to Mother and, Nature or yeah, the earth. Yeah, and, and connected to the Almighty. Um, can a woman be a Rastaman? <laughs> no. No. Okay. To so be a Rasta woman. Rasta woman. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go to what a woman is, you know? Okay. A womb. A womb. Womb, you know, the womb, the womb yes. of soul. The yes. source of life. The source of life, Mother Earth, nature, creation. Woman is the creation of all things. Of all, yes. Right. And uh, man come to woman. Mm -hmm. So did woman through man. <laughs> right. You know? Right. So, we're all one in a, in a way, you know? So, if your father were to send you a message, and he obviously, he's looking down and, and supervising and blessing everything that you're doing. What would he say about this project? What would his feedback be, do you think? Just make sure you do it right, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Make sure whatever you're doing, you do it because you want to do it. You want to do it, not because you have to do it. Right. And make sure you love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And just treat people good. Be good to people. Be good to people, and you know? And make sure you're not doing it for, doing it for yourself. Right, for your selfish gains. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Make sure you, you, if you make sure whatever you can do, you gonna make the next man better. I'm lightly, but one represents all. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Feels good. I'm like I'm feeling very empowered right now. What is it like being a Marley, and what is it like living with the legacy of of someone who made such a big impact on the world, not just in music, but just on the world? What is it like being a Marley? What is it like being a Marley? See, I've been a Marley all my life. <laughs> I know, so it's kind of and hard like to summing up my life, <laughs> like, like. Or you know your experience you know, well, of like, having your name, or you know uh, being part of that legacy. Well, you know, this this is what it's like. It's always having your father's teaching available to you. Mm -hmm. um, always having your brothers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there are many. Yeah. Yes. Always having your big sister <laughs> mm -hmm. to to keep you in the direction. Being a Marley, you know, we learn, the first thing we learn is to respect our elders, you know. Okay. Being a Marley, you learn to give, you know. Mm -hmm. Being a Marley means respect, less, you know, respect for humanity. Right. It's respect for life in general, you know. Being a Marley is that. Being a Marley is to seek humility, you know, no matter what the crisis is, you know. Being a Marley means humbleness, and, you know. Seek humility and, and drive one love and peace. That's a really great message. Okay, guys, we're signing out for now. This is Michelle from MichaelaTV.com with Rohan Marley. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. So when the man comes, there will be.